Hello everyone, uh, this is Matthew. Uh, welcome again to one of my videos. Uh, I'm happy you're watching it. It is Today is the lovely day of March 8th. It's Saturday. Uh, it was quite, uh, was it quite nice? It was nicer this week, or these last two days, than it has been all week. Um, I'm hoping, cross my fingers, that winter will soon be over because right now I am officially over it. <laughs> officially. Um, so yes, today I'm going to give you yet another one of my updates. Yet another. I've only done one. Yet another one of my updates about what I have been writing and what I have been reading. Uh, and so to start off, I would just like to mention what I have been writing. So since the last time I spoke to you, I have written about a thousand words. So I'm up to about 7,000 words now. And uh, that's, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, even though I didn't get a chance to write as much as I wanted to this last week, I had a few other projects to complete and uh, I'm teaching and I had to do a lot of marking this week. So those were two things that were interfering, but at the same time I managed to do a thousand words, which I'm very happy about and which I hope I can at least do a thousand words each week. Um, in terms of how the writing is going, it's been going good. Um, I am realizing, uh, so to give you some context in terms of what my plan is for my book, I plan to have 10 chapters, and in each chapter I plan to focus on a different character, and I plan for my book to be, in its first draft, 100,000 words. So each chapter will have to be about 10,000 words. And since I'm getting to about 7,000 words, that means I'm almost done what I'd planned to do for my first chapter. But the problem is that I haven't necessarily written all the things that I plan to write in my plan. And so, I mean, this is natural when you're writing, you kind of drift away from your plan as you become more interested in certain things. And I've created a character that I wasn't expecting to create that I'm interested in. I'm interested in getting him to interact with my main character for my chapter. Uh, but what this means is that I'm, I'm feeling a little pressure because I have to figure out, am I going to get rid of my plan or change my plan? Or am I going to try to bring my plot back to what my plan was originally? And I think I'm going to try to do the second one. I'm going to try to bring the plot back and uh, hopefully, hopefully I will be able to do it. Um, I find usually if I try, if I give myself a goal and then I, and even if the goal is kind of hard, it encourages me to come up with interesting ideas. So hopefully that will happen. If not, I guess I'll just write and, you know, and then maybe, who knows, maybe if I finish 10,000 words and I'm like, I don't want to write about this chapter anymore, I might just move on to the next one. So we'll see. I'll let you know how, as we go. So that's the writing. Um, otherwise it's going well. Uh, like I said, I wish I could do a little bit more. Uh, in terms of my reading, I am still reading Madame Bovary. Um, it's going good. I'm about halfway through it now. Um, and, uh, this week I noticed, I don't know why it took this, took me this long, but it, I noticed that she has notes at the back. Uh, and you know, I don't always read the notes, but her notes are, are interesting. And there's a lot of stuff about historical, you know, clothing and carriages and things like that, that since I've read a fair number of 19th century novels, I have a general idea about, so I don't really need those notes as much, although she's she writes really good versions of these notes. Um, but what she does do, which I really like, is that she notes some of the grammar uh, techniques that Flaubert uses in her in her notes. So for instance, when I was reading the notes, I realized that I totally missed something that was interesting that Flaubert did and she pointed it out. And so I went back and reread it and it was this. It says, 
She would go as far as the beech grove at Banville, near the abandoned pavilion that forms one corner of the wall next to the fields. In the broad barrier ditch there, among the grasses, grow tall reeds with sharp-edged blades. So what's interesting there is, I don't know if you've noticed it, but he moved from, uh, well, the whole book is in past tense. He's, he, he's moved from past tense and pushed in a little or put in a little present tense. And that's interesting because while well, it makes it sound like the, uh, the, the scene that he's described didn't just happen in the past, but that it's still like that now. So it kind of adds some uh, level of authenticity to it. It makes it sound almost like he's recounting a tale and he's casually accidentally mentioning that this is still the way it is now. And I mean, that's, that's an interesting technique. And considering that I want to do a sort of non-fictional, uh, uh, you know, lens for my, for my novel, which I'll explain in later videos, but it, I want to kind of do something like that. So I was thinking that maybe that's a technique that I could use in my book. And there's uh, other things as well. Um, there's a chapter uh, that I'm right, reading right now. It's, it's kind of the main centerpiece. It's the, the big farm show. And I think Flaubert is using it to kind of sum up a lot of his themes that he has in this book, which is, you know, all about how terribly dull and close-minded the petty, petty bourgeoisie are. And, um, and so, I mean, that aspect is, you know, it, it's not that interesting to me because I already know what he means by that. It's kind of obvious all the way through. But what I found interesting about it was that, you know, so much of the novel is inside the head of Madame Bovary and a few other characters uh, that it can get a little bit claustrophobic. And when he has this huge farm scene, he starts to follow other people, but from, um, from like a third person, or I guess a lot of times the novel is, is weirdly like a first person plural, like a we. Um, and so he's viewing all these people from the outside and they're going about their business in a way that doesn't directly move the plot of the novel forward. And that's the key thing is that it feels like, like a lot of it could be unnecessary, but it gives a feeling of um, reality to the novel because there's all these people who are doing their own thing and they're not necessarily caring about Madame Bovary's problems or her wishes or her desires. And so for me, that was, that was a good reminder of you, when you're trying to bring reality and you can often do it by reminding the reader of worlds outside of the main character's world. I don't think I explained that well enough, but hopefully you got the main idea. Uh, there's lots of other things that I've been getting from it. I'm still reading it pretty slowly because I only really read it when I'm commuting and some mornings I'm just like, oh, I'm so tired, I can't read right now. But of course, even though I haven't finished it, I have a book addiction, so I buy books all the time and do not read enough of them to justify the amount of books I buy. So, but I felt this was kind of important. Uh, World's Biggest Bookstore, it's really sad, um, is closing, and it was one of my favorite bookstores in the city, simply because I could go there and I knew I would find all sorts of things that I never even thought I I would be able to find, or that there'd be things there that I wouldn't, I would have never imagined seeing before. And I, I found a lot of interesting books just by, by browsing the shelves. Um, and so they're having a sale right now because they're closing and everything in the store is 50% off. It was crazy. Like entire sections were gone. Um, and this is an enormous bookstore and there was a, an enormous lineup uh, going around the bookstore. So even though it's 50% off, I'm kind of poor right now, so I couldn't buy a lot of books, but I decided to buy uh, this one, the Complete Aeschylus. It's actually only the second volume of his, um, and that's because um, it's got the Persians and other plays, and I've just read Herodotus, 
and it was about the Persian War, and so I'm actually really interested in reading Aeschylus's version of the Persian War, and I need some more Greek drama in my life. You know, we all need more Greek drama. And the other one that I purchased is actually, I was quite amazed and excited to see this. It's uh, Keith Haring's Journals, and uh, Keith Haring is one of my favorite artists, a uh, very inspiring figure to me, particularly in the way he talks about um, art being popular and uh, avant-garde art being popular, which I really like. And, uh, and I know these journals are saucy, we'll say that, saucy, and filled with all sorts of thoughts and interesting ideas. And I, I don't know if I'll read it like cover to cover, but it'll be a fun book to peruse peruse, you know, just peruse it. Maybe I'll put it in the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got those two books, and I don't know when I'll read them, but who knows? Um, so, and that's probably going to be the, yeah, so that's basically it. Um, so I hope to see you next week with a further update of what I've been writing, what I've been reading. If you do want to ask me questions, no one's asked me a question yet, but if you want to ask me a question, I'd love to hear it. Please email me in the uh, email address in the description box. Otherwise, I plan to see you next week, and have a good week. Bye!